Hello and welcome back to the 18th and final round of Justice for Olivier Panis in Formula 197 and it brings us to the European Grand Prix at Jerez. Jerez opened in December 1985 and hosted five Spanish Grand Prix from 1986 through to 1990 and then a further two European Grand Prix, one in 1994 and the other this one in 1997 and it will be the last time Jerez hosted a Formula 1 Grand Prix. However, it remains a popular testing venue. And as this is the final round of the championship, it also means an end to charity predictions. Thank you so, so much to everyone who's pledged throughout the season. I know that some people's predictions are, uh, you know, waiting on this the results of this final round. Can we overhaul Frentz and that four-point deficit? And can we get Panis into third? That, I know some people's predictions are based on that. But regardless, uh, thank you so, so much. And I can reveal to you the charity I've picked. I mentioned back at the French Grand Prix that it was going to be a charity relating to helping Ukrainian refugees uh, and the charity I've picked is British Ukrainian Aid. It was founded in 2014 by two people, Dr. Tatiana Vovnyanko and Natalia Ravliuk and uh, it is a grassroots charity. Everyone who works for the charity does so on a volunteer basis outside of their day jobs. And to read from their website, the charity supports people suffering from the war and humanitarian crisis in Ukraine by aligning UK and Ukrainian efforts. And since the full-scale invasion in February 2022, their main focus has been providing essential medical aid to Ukraine. I've set up a Just Giving page, the link to which is in the description. Uh, so if you have pledged and are still able to donate, please do so there. That means your donation goes directly to the charity. Uh, and also, I believe we get gift aid on those. So that's an extra 25%, I think, on your donations via Just Giving. There's also a link to the charity's website on that page if you want to find out a bit more about them. Like I said, I picked them because, you know, grassroots charity, volunteers, they've been well established since 2014. So it seemed like a good choice to know that, you know, the donation was going to the right place and it would end up with the right people. Like I said, this, this charity prediction has become a little side quest of, of these videos, but it's a really nice thing to do and I appreciate everyone's support. So thank you very, very much. Whatever we raise, I'm going to top up to the pot as well, and I'll let you know exactly how much we raised at the start of next season. Now, as I've done all season, I'm going to talk a little bit about what really happened at the real 1997 European Grand Prix race weekend. I think you all know very well what happened this weekend. But just in case, it was a famous qualifying session as, with the title on the line, three cars registered the exact same time for pole position. Villeneuve, Schumacher, Frentzen. And they were eventually ordered in whoever set the time first. So Villeneuve took pole, the decisive qualifying session. It's just incredible. The fact that even two would do it, being the two championship contenders as well, but throw in just a third, Frentzen as well. Damon Hill qualified a very respectable fourth, just five hundredths down off the time of the top three. This is incredible considering where they started the season, where he couldn't even get to the beginning of the race. Panis ended the season by qualifying ninth in a Benetton sandwich. And um, to be honest, I am going to make that our target for the final race of the season. But from practice, and what I know the estimated pole time to be, we're pretty quick. I'm whispering it because... To be honest with you, this is usually when the car blows up. Now, as has been the case throughout the season, there is a hefty gap between the real pole time and the game target. But today, that's because there's a difference in the layout that was used and the layout in the game. More on that in a second. But as you can see, 113, the top end target. I'm at 113.2 and we're about to go quicker as we fire through Expo 92. Lovely elevation change through there. Break early for Michelin and just get on the throttle early in the next two corners of flat. Keep an eye out, by the way, in the background throughout the race for the giant Coke bottle. It has no significance on how well we perform, but it is a giant Coke bottle. Need I say more? End of sector one, we head down this long straight and towards the infamous hairpin where you know what happened. And this hairpin is actually called Dry Sack. Do with that what you will. Again, try and break early, clip the apex, get on the power as early as possible, and through turns seven and eight. 7 is flat, 8 is not. Again, it's easy to kind of break a bit later, but if we break early, we can hug the inside of the corner and be on the throttle early. Head towards Angle Nieto. Easy to run this too wide, but here the angle is perfect. Nailed this one. 
Now up to the right hand side you'll see a couple of curbs just there. That is Chicane Senna which was used in the real 97 European Grand Prix. Not used here today hence why there's such a quicker lap time. Through the final hairpin and I look down now I'm already glancing I can see this is going to be quicker. Oh, that's surely I that might be pole. Yeah. I was really quick. I felt I was really quick. Could it be pole number four for Olivier Panis? What a way by eight tenths of a second from Schumacher. Fizikel a third, Villeneuve fourth. Frentzen is not even in the top six. Where is he? Nakano seventh, lad. It is on. It's what? I mean, where have, where's this slightly mixed up grid been all season long? <laughs> You know, Olivier Panis had one of the longest careers in Formula 1 without a pole position, and this season we have given him four. So it may not be a world title for him, but that's a little bit of justice there. Four pole positions. So again, you probably know the story, but I'll have a good story. So here it is one more time. Villeneuve got a good start, but in the words of Marie Walker, Michael Schumacher got away better, better, better. Schumacher and Villeneuve pitted, but Frentzen stayed out and inherited the lead of the race. And him, potentially with the help of Mika Hakkinen, more on that later, basically backed up the pace and backed Schumacher into Villeneuve. And Villeneuve was quick anyway. He set the fastest lap. He was on a charge and he was gunning for Schumacher. Then on lap 47, it happened. That move, that turn of the steering wheel and that iconic piece of commentary from Martin Brundle. Schumacher's 94 tribute act had failed and it put him out of the race, but Villeneuve still needed to score to win the title. So he just nursed it home and he was overtaken in the last few corners by both McLarens to get home third and win the 1997 Formula One World Championship. Hakkinen won his first ever Grand Prix and with all the engine issues he'd had throughout the season, it was very much long overdue and very much deserved. However, allegations did persist that Williams and McLaren were in cahoots, that McLaren would help slow down Ferrari and in return, that is why Villeneuve moved out the way of both McLarens at the end. I suppose it's very lucky that Schumacher ended up kind of ruining his own championship challenge and getting himself disqualified. So even though he had the second most points, he was thrown out of the championship. Without Schumacher doing that, you do wonder how quickly all that would have gone away. Berger very, very nearly stole a podium off Villeneuve in his final race before retirement. And the top six finished within five seconds of each other is quite remarkable. Olivier Panis finished in seventh, but he was over a minute back. He was the highest Bridgestone finisher that day. As for our target, well, we have clearly got the pace here. The goal is very simple. It's just to, to do what we need to to finish ahead of Frentzen. To be honest, first place is the only place that guarantees it. We are starting in first. So let's let's end for a win. Can we pick up our fifth win of the season and steal third in the championship at the very end? Please, Mugen Honda, I'm, I'm begging you, just, just hold out. For the final time this season, and for the final time in Jerez, the red lights go on. And they go out in the European Grand Prix, and as expected, it's a slow start. Schumacher fires into the lead at Turn 1. Take the corner well, though. We have Villeneuve right behind us, who's managed to get past uh, Fisichella. Oh, and Schumacher is off. Well, he seemed to gain a load of time through that little section. And surely down the straight, we can maybe make a move at the exact place. <laughs> at the exact place Villeneuve did. Oh, but we stepped out of the slipstream a bit too early and our speed advantage disappeared. Expecting to kind of maybe get away here a bit. Not too bad. 
not too bad compared to how some of those corners have gone throughout this season. Now, come on, can we get the run up to the final hairpin, maybe? No, we are not quicker than <laughs> these guys in any of the places I thought we'd be. So Villeneuve behind us. What's the gap going to be as we head over the line? Oof, he flies away. Right, come on. Bunch up to us there. It does seem to be around this corner that we can take flat and they can't and we just gain a lot of time. Bit sluggish out of there. This might be the place. Shouldn't have moved out the slipstream so early. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's silly. Outbreak myself into there. Williams, number one. In fourth place, Giancarlo Fisichella. In fifth position, David Coulthard. In sixth position, Shinji Nakano. Go on, Shinji. Second point of the year, maybe. I don't know how it's going to work it out if we're on the same points. On count back, we've won more races than Frentzen. So even if he finishes fifth, in theory, we should still get third. But I don't trust this game to play it that way. But at the minute, Schumacher's getting away. And I, if I focus, I can catch him. I'm, I'm thinking too much about... He's hit the Canadian! He bloody has not. I was taking the corner. He's hit the Canadian. The Canadian shouldn't be lunging up my um, backside. Excuse me. Right, I need to focus on my single lap pace again. I'm, I'm, let's, I can catch him. The car in front will be getting worried after that lap time. So final sector, we seem to hold about level. It's about getting this right. And this run out of this corner is what we need to use. Get this corner as best we can. Can we get in the slipstream? It might be too far back. Do I stay? I think I do. Oh, we don't hit. <laughs> the nervousness of trying to go for a move on Schumacher there, of all places. Oh, dear me. Sorry, Michael. I was not expecting him to take that line or break at that point. We've got a slow-moving car. It's a McLaren. After the allegations in real life of McLaren slowing Ferrari and literally a McLaren has <laughs> just blocked Michael Schumacher in. I mean, it has slightly taken away from getting to make the move on Schumacher at the place that Villeneuve made the move. That's what I was hoping to line up for this very lap. Remember, it's important for McLaren. They are, they need like a second place finish to try and overhaul Arrows. Otherwise, Arrows are finishing sixth ahead of them in the championship. It's been a dismal season for McLaren. Oh dear, that was poor. Come on, let's not switch off now. We've been given this gap. Schumacher takes almost a second and a half hours. Right, come on, switch back on now. You know, there was a, a forum that had a load of F197 setups that Racing Di Milano sent me at the start of the season. I've been referring to it throughout. A lot of the times I've been f following the advice and it's been very useful. This is one of the few tracks that I've actually gone against what that forum advised. And it is working. It has worked so well at a track that, again, on face value, I was not expecting us to have the performance at. Oh, that's silly. Stop overcooking it there. In fourth, Giancarlo Fisichella. In fifth, Shinji Nakano. In sixth, Eddie Irvine. I don't think any of the crowd will be getting a sunburn out there today. Well, Coulthard has, has disappeared from the top six. I wonder if that was Coulthard, because Nakano. Nakano is fifth.
Another back marker, a slow moving arrows. <laughs> and suspiciously, the gap goes up to eight seconds. Do I get the feeling that the arrows didn't move out the way either? <laughs> well, Frentzen has not even been at the races today. Still not in the top six. And we, assuming the engine isn't going to suddenly give up on us now, are about to roll to our <laughs> our fifth win of the season. No, it's not a world championship for Olivier Panis, but to give him four pole positions he never had, five additional wins to the one he got in Monaco, including a win in Monaco, that drive in Monza. And to be fair, that drive in Japan, to come back from that was amazing. And that's the sort of things you can do to put justice on him. He was third in the world championship when he crashed out and injured and broke both his legs in Canada and we've gotten that third place back. We're coming back to this game because I still need to beat it but it will be with someone else but for now I think I can say wholeheartedly this is justice for Olivier Panis win number five <laughs> and a 113.1 super fast what a result. What a result in the end. And you know what? I can be happy, even though we got a little bit of help from some bat markers along the way. You cannot argue that we're pulling out a 13.7 second gap. So the win, fastest lap, and over 13 seconds ahead from Michael Schumacher. Villeneuve in third. Fisichella just drops to fourth. Shinji Nakano scores points for the second time this season. And Johnny Herbert scores points for, I think, the second time this season. That's his second point of the season. What a result. Winning the fastest lap. Awesome. So the point standings after the final round, Jacques Villeneuve is world champion. It was confirmed so at the end of the last round. He finishes 14 points ahead of Michael Schumacher. We finish six points ahead of Heinz Harald Frentzen. We have managed, <laughs> managed third place. What a fight throughout the season to get there. We've won five races this season, that's 50 points. We only managed 15 points outside of, of winning. I mean, that's that's been the big issue. It's why Villeneuve has almost double our tally. But to split, basically, the Williams and Ferrari drivers when those were clearly the standout cars of the season. Frentzen fourth, Irvine fifth, Alacy sixth, Alacy and Irvine both missing out on points today. In the constructors, it was a gentle stroll for Williams to get there in the end. Ferrari a comfortable second, and we do end up third. Three points of that. Uh, Shinji Nakano, thank you Shinji for your contribution. Bennett in fourth, Jordan in fifth, their total getting bolstered by uh, Fisichella's uh, scoring today. Arrows in sixth, oh my word. Uh, McLaren, they finished seventh, I believe with seven points. And then the only other team to score points I think was Sauber, Johnny Herbert getting them two points, I, I believe. So I actually don't remember what happens at the end now. So let's see what happens next. Yes, I did. Great work. Coming third in the championship is such an achievement, something only the very best drivers in the world can claim to have done. It's only a matter of time, I think, before we see him take the Grand Prix crown. That's a lovely touch. I love that. That's awesome. So I would say we've done Olivier Panis justice there. Because the thing is, no matter what happened in 1997, he thought he was in a good place with Prost. And I don't think he was even necessarily looking to be snapped up by someone else. And Peugeot seemed to have a decent engine. He didn't realise that when the regs changed, he would be with a team that just sink them all the way to the bottom. So at least in this one standalone season, we've given him a few more things to shout about, a few more strings to his bow. But I've not beaten this game, so we are going to try again. There is going to be a change of driver. I always want to try and avoid being with, say, the top two teams of any given season, because I think that might be too easy. So we go outside of Williams and Ferrari. We need to break out the big guns. 
Oh yeah. He's coming back. Justice for John Lacey returns in Formula 197 very, very soon, and I cannot wait to get started. And I cannot wait to complete the season in under a calendar year because damn that took a long time but f198 fans don't worry i'm going to overlap the seasons i'm not going to wait we are going to go into f198 as well very soon we're going to do another upfront revisit and just remind ourselves exactly the sort of monstrosity that we're dealing with and thank you so so much for your support throughout this season it's been a pleasure and again thank you to everyone who's pledged from the charity predictions remember that just giving link uh, for british ukrainian aid is in the description please give what you can and uh, yeah thank you so so much it's been such a joy i'm glad we got third in the end it was a tough pill to swallow that we wouldn't be part of the championship fight early on when we refocused and got into that fight with friends and towards the end I've, I've enjoyed this season. It's been good. Thank you very much for watching, and I will hopefully see you very, very soon.